Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Yes. Jason. Yes. Yeah, the audience is waiting for you. Sure. Sure. Well, here I am. The topic today, um, or what we're doing today, is in honor of my mother uh, and um, Miss Sandra Bland and uh, Brother McDowell and Brother um, Brother uh, James Brown, Sergeant James Brown, and Brother. Uh, uh, Day, D-A-Y. Uh, these youngsters have been, have gone through, um, they lost their lives already. I mean, they, they were assassinated in this last couple of weeks. Um, and so they're no longer here with us. And so we're dedicating this presentation to the lives of those young warriors. Assassination and, or lynching was done as a result of ignorance on the part of their, their being killed. And so when you talk about Gagat, a revelation from God, it comes as a result of God being tired with ignorance uh, trying to take over the world. Um, and that ignorance, some of the highlights of that ignorance is a Jim Crow effort of trying to convince black people and the rest of the world that black men are three-fifths of men, of, of a man, and pump that into the heads of um, everybody. Um, in the process, the value of the black life was reduced to three-fifths, and which is a suggestion our lives are worthless. That is where all this thing hinged on. Summary of the God order is that ratio is closer to the reverse Instead of three-fifths of a man, the black man is five-thirds. Five over two, you invert, you know, what was given. That's three-fifths. You put five on top instead of in the, in the bottom. So the black man, according to the court order called Gagan, actually is closer to five-thirds, five over five three of a man, a man here being standardized as the uh, non-black man. So that is what God ordered, because five over three is close to nine over six, or 28 over 19. This is the God order. Now, but because the system we still have right now has been based on that three-fifths of uh, a man for the black men, um, to extension, the black race. Everything about us was designed to reflect or to force a reflection of, of reality to that kind of situation, which forced black people to begin to act, to learn how to act, to fit in that three-fifths of a, a human level. It actually got into every aspect of our lives, including schools, special ed as supposed to reflect the three-fifths of a man. The so-called historical black colleges, the so-called Negro colleges, were designed to fit into the three-fifths of a, of a man kind of thing. God got tired, got really, really tired of that, so God you know, ordered the entire universe to understand what's the reality of the intelligence of the, and their worth, the value of the black people, the black race. So God did that by revealing the God order called Gagat, 
which is a revelation of God, God's self, which Professor, Sir Professor Stephen Hawking in 1991 concluded such a revelation by God in terms of the secret of of creation cannot be given to any creature, let alone human beings. And so he 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 he, he dropped out of the search for the unified field theory. Ironically, Gagot was already revealed one year earlier, but he wasn't aware of it. So it is the ultimate blessing, which is what Brother Glover was trying to articulate. Um some people, some of your audience who do not know the geometry of what we're talking about can be quick to conclude, well, you know, there's no modesty, you know, in making that statement. Uh, for which we alert any person with that kind of idea to drop it because God does God is not modest. God cannot be modest to say, look, I'm like human beings. God can't do that. Therefore, God order tells only the absolutely infallible truth. An absolute infallible truth is like 2 plus 1 minus 3. It has to be equal to 0. There is no issue of modesty in that kind of situation. There's no modesty. There. Nobody, you can't say, you're going to say the answer is, you know, two, man, 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 5 because you like to be modest. You will be committing, uh, you will be committing an error or you'll be fraudulent. So if modesty say your answer is to be 5, then that modesty is a fraud against God. That's not God order. So what we're presenting here is God order that ordain a black man talking to you with the ultimate intelligence. Eight as of infinity, exactly. If we come here and we try to talk in terms of a, a modesty and not give you that presentation to be like Say 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 5. Our order totally from God totally forbids that. So we have to tell you exactly the truth. And where eta has obeyed itself, which is a formula, eta has obeyed is equal to little g uh, n j x j sub j to power n plus 1. That is what eta sub n means. That's the formula. Like 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. That's what measures my intelligence. And intelligence of everybody. Mine, however, has n is equal to infinity. Now, what was done in Yale University? First, first of all, in Gottingen. They saw that. One of the guys that reviewed Gagot was a guy called Gregory Sagas. A guy that is, is peerless in, in terms of publications in mathematics research. Sagas, T C A G A S. He reviewed Gagas and, and he was blown away that the entire mathematics can be handed over to one single creature, particularly a black man. So he had no problem passing it. You know, if you do not do what he did, then you destroy your own credibility because, like I said, it's like, you know, saying 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 5 because you, are, you have a lot of prestigious position in Harvard as a mathematics professor. Eventually, it's going to be seen not only would your credibility be destroyed, Harvard's credibility will be also destroyed, you know. And so, therefore, very few knowledgeable, intelligent people take a chance at an absolute truth, which is what ethos of infinity for my intelligence is. Now, so, but God expected or wanted the implementation of that God order that came out in 1990 to be implemented immediately by the whole world, especially here in America. Uh, but 
Jim Crow wanted to be certain by the middle of 1990s, that was 1995, 1996, they were convinced there's no way around Professor Yi for being blessed with infinite intelligence. And so they ordered Yale University and other universities globally to actually measure what the other black, uh, in the other black people as well as the rest of the humanity, how they rank compared to Yibo. That's where the Yale study came out. Now, the five-fifths, I'm sorry, the three-fifths uh, uh, um, three of a, a brain allocation for black people was done on the basis of a fraud to allow Jim Crow to be looked at as capable of ruling the world. It was a fraud. And what the way they describe that in the scientific community is they put into the study what is called the European bias, which is basically Jim Crow. Because they can't rank, they couldn't rank black people superior in intelligence and yet be bossing black people around or lynching them. You know? So all this justify what is against the God order, that you tell a lie that black people are three-fifths of a human being, in, a, in, a, in a, among other things, to justify your lynching them and killing them, say their lives are worthless. Okay? So they could be killed like dogs and stuff like that. They call us monkeys. But what happens is, you see, the God order proves clearly that the non-blacks are closer to monkeys, way closer to monkeys than we are. Because with the Yale study, our intelligence is eta sub 28 compared to uh, eta sub 19 for the non-blacks. But the chimpanzees and monkeys and all this, their intelligence is eta sub 15. So they're only uh, four, uh, four points. Uh, the monkeys are a little four, four points from uh, the rest, uh, uh, the non-blacks in terms of intelligence, while the non-blacks are nine points below the black intelligence. And of course, the monkeys, you know, are you know, you add nine points to four, that will get thirteen points. Okay, thirteen points away, you know, below. Okay. So it was below the intelligence of the black people. So, but because this was enforced, you know, uh, in order to qualify or make Jim Crow look like they're qualified to rule the world, there's a lot of implications there that are very, very disturbing. One, the God order says the black race is closer to God than any other set of creatures. Because God ordained me with ultimate intelligence. That means I am closer to God in intelligence than any other creature. That was summarized by a professor, a mathematics and physics professor called Krishnandu Dasgupta from the top 20 university in India, who said, Oyibo is more close to God than other creature, which is another way of saying the black race is more close to God than any other race or other creature set. So now, but Jim Crow had to, had to you know, sub, uh, uh, suppress that in order to justify becoming president because their presidency qualifications, you know, First, had to say, well, it has to be non-black, particularly Europeans. But within the Europeans, they have to find which of the European segments or locations or or people segments set, uh, you know, are, more, are the most intelligent. They found the Germans to be the very uh, center in terms of intelligence of the the European world. So you see that. Almost every president before Obama uh, was, had German roots. And so, in fact, the Germany colonized England and took over their royalty. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is German. 
okay, from Hanover, not far from Gottingen University, where the surrender to the truth of the Almighty God was carried out in 2004-05, when they had the Gagot walk, they, they actually celebrated Gagot by, you know, by celebrating the handover of the baton from Professor uh, Gauss to, uh, to Yibo. So, but the other systems, even as this were happening, were still intact on the basis of three-fifths of men, of, of humans, for black people, which is the basis in, in, that, in that kind of dynamics, you must act to be inferior. So you could call Jim Crow master. You can you can be presented as having eight as of twenty eight and be saying master to somebody that has eight as of nineteen. So he has to make you look like you are your eta is sub eighteen or less. So you can now say master. So what happens is the Jim Crow laws forces you to behave like you are you have eight as of N where N is less than nineteen. For you to survive, it becomes illegal. Let me repeat it again. It becomes a, a de facto illegal for you to be yourself, to act as if you have eight or some, uh, 28. That is where the dynamics of where, wherever one or more, I mean, two or more black people are gathered together, uh, the non blacks have to be present. Okay? Uh, you know, on the one hand, they know that the intelligence of the black people, which is being misrepresented, is powerful enough that all they need is to come together, okay? And they can solve literally any problem that God permits humans to solve, okay? So for that reason, they make sure that you don't come together. Uh, as a matter of fact, the dynamics of controlling you is based on divide and conquer, divide and conquer. So you lost one of your most powerful attributes, which is uh, united. United we stand and divide and we fall. When they divided us, we fell. That's how we became prisoners of war. And therefore, God, for, God forbids through God that anyone using the term slaves or slave trade and all the other nonsense for black people. Because that's an impossibility in reality. For black people to be called slaves, it means you're calling God a slave because God is higher. It means you have turned the thing upside down so that if 19, 8 times of 19 is on top, then 8 times of 28 will be below it. And God, who, you know, is not only 8 times of infinity, but God is also the intelligence, God's self. So God feels intelligence. In real space time, I feel intelligence in a transformed space. That's, that's a big difference. You know, I still, I, still, I still understand everything. However, you know, mine is through a transformation through that ethos of Ben. God does not need that because God, God is conscious about every reality in, a, in any particular point of space time. So, therefore, that's a difference. So, therefore, but what happens is if you, act, if you set ethos of 19, is in charge and the most intelligent, of course, what you say is God is in the bottom. God is the, I mean, I don't even want to use the word, which is a huge insult and a disrespect and something that God ordered God to rectify immediately because God, God, God got tired, you know, of being disrespected. Okay? So this is of interest to every one of God's creatures because God created us according to God's order. Okay? If you don't know that is, you know, subtract yourself from yourself. Any reality that subtracts itself from itself will come from one source, which is zero. That zero is the reference point called the G-I-J. Okay? That represents God. That's where we all come from, which is answer to the age-old question that says, okay, what is God? You know, uh, where do we come from? And why are we here? Okay? Yes? Uh, God is um, the one unbounded space-time of intelligence that we call the universe, which can't expand. 
That is what God is. Nobody could answer that question before. Now, people are trying to model God after themselves. Before that, and Professor Einstein, who popularized the search for the unified view theory, was, used to laugh at humanity. You know, when he says, look, you can't make God fit into a boundary. You know, though he didn't know what God was, but he knew what God wasn't, which is God cannot be a human being. He said that's so childish that, you know, and of course the religious dynamics went after him and called him an atheist. No, 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 no. He's not, he's not an atheist. He, said, he calls himself a deist, you know, but he could not figure out what God is. That was that to wait until Gagot came around. And now with Gagot here, not only did we agree with him that it is childish to uh, try to drag God into a boundary, it's embarrassing for the rest of us who, who feel proud with, with the top of the creation and so on as human beings. God cannot be in the boundary. God is unbounded, okay? And uh, so what happened then was, you know, in the process, uh, God actually revealed the truth about God's self, you know, so we agree, God got agree with Albert Einstein that God cannot be bounded, okay? But we also took him to the level where he wanted to be, which is if God cannot be uh, bounded, then what is God? That is the answer that I just gave. God is the one on bounded space-time of intelligence that we call the universe, which can't expand. That is the absolute, absolutely infallible definition of the Almighty God. Okay? Um, so therefore, so now it's a new world. It's a new order. It's the final order, the only order, which is the God order. Okay? Which is what I'm revealing to you right now. But what happens is, under that Jim Crow, fraud of calling black people three-fifths of human beings or three-fifths of intelligence, you have to act. You pretend to be dumb. Call you dumb nigga and all the other stuff. Okay? And if you didn't do that, you were lynched. Okay? That is the kind of thing that was existing. And it seemed as if the evil forces had taken over the entire creation. That's why God, you know, delivered this God order. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland, who is Sandra Bland? Sandra Bland... Is our mother. She's our sister. She's our daughter. She's our wife. And who are the other people that are being lynched along with her? Well, you have Brother McDowell. Here is a young man who is crippled, is in a chair in a wheelchair. Jim Crow had the nerve to go and gun him down there. Okay, then the brother, uh, brother uh, Day was similarly strangled. He was strangled, something to that effect. A young, a teenager. Okay, Jim Crow was so cowardly and so uh, in the disrespect of the creator to actually go after such a, 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 a young brother, you know. And then um, the brother, the other brother, brother Sergeant uh, Brown, James Brown, Many of you who are very conscious will know that, yeah, a person bearing James Brown will have a problem with Jim Crow because James, the name James Brown is associated with, you know, self-pride, black pride, and, and, and people who, who see themselves as being very conscious and, and understand the glory of God that is, vision, you know, that they could feel in their veins and their soul. Okay, so they murdered him. They suffocated him to death. He was crying. He said, man, please, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And this, you know, you know a bunch of, of, of uh, people were suffocating him to death until they actually assassinated him. Now, first of all, that kind of activity, that kind of behavior is definitely geometrically anti-God. There's no way you can talk about being godly, doing that kind of thing, number one. Because only you can, none of us can create anything. As much as God has given me to understand, I can design and try to actualize things, but I still need the material from God, which is the space-time. Okay? 
So nobody, and if I can't do it, nothing in the universe can do it. Okay, because God gave me the understanding of everything. Now, so therefore, we as creatures can't create a creature, but we don't have any problem blowing away a creature any day. That is what is anti-God, and it comes out of ignorance. Because if you go on our website, you see something that says, um, God's age of intelligence is life and heaven, while ignorance is hell and death. So anywhere you see in death, it's coming out of ignorance, which is absence of God. Therefore, God has, there's only one that saves, the, you know, there's only one thing that can save, you know, humanity and the rest of the universe, you know, in the middle of that kind of ignorance, which is gathered in totality of intelligence. Okay? That's what I'm delivering to you right now. So now, so uh, Sister Sandra Bland is accepted even by non-blacks. The comment you see on the website is that she was actually assassinated uh, as a result of her, uh, there's a word they use, the, he was, she was intelligent, in effect. That's equivalent. You know, they say, look, she was attacked, killed because she was assertive. That's the word that was actually used, assertive, was, which another way of saying he was conscious and intelligent, which contradicts the Jim Crow law, you know, that says a black person cannot act intelligent. When you make a, take a role in a, in a movies, you take the... Uh, 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 you know, buffoonery, buffoon, you know, Emerson Andy kind of role until very, very recently, okay? And, of course, on the basis of that, you couldn't be president or anything like that before Gaza because presidencies are not elected on the basis of affirmative action. You have to show that they, if they didn't even do that for Europeans, you know they're not going to do that for the black people. So intelligence has to be the basis because nobody wants to give a pilot a pilot that has nothing to, no idea about how to pilot a plane just because of affirmative action to be a pilot. That's what being you know, president is all about. Okay? You know, so affirmative action, action does not come in when it comes to selecting a president because the lives of the entire society depends on who is the pilot and who is the president. So therefore, and on that basis, they chose the Germans as being the best equivalent pilot. That's why they've been presidents up until this point. But in 1990, when God order arrived, God clarified who indeed should be piloting the universe, which is the black race, by God ordaining me with ultimate intelligence, etas of infinity. Where etas of Ben represents exactly that is exact representation of intelligence. Where for me, the end was designed by God to be infinity. And since black people share that intelligence, I mean, they share that genes, share my genes, that's how God declared infallibly the black race to be the most intelligent the richest and the most powerful race. This is what needs to be understood. This is a God order. And it's infallible, which is why the Europeans who, who have earned uh, respect for being intelligent, like the Germans, the Germans, the, the, the Germans have recognized God, God better than many other countries, including England. Okay? They didn't mince words. They knew what Gagot is because they know that's what uh, Gauss was, was searching for. Newton was searching for oil. was searching for that as well. Certainly David Hilbert was searching for that. And so when it comes to ranking which work goes in with 26, it was a tough choice for them, especially you know, people like uh, David Hilbert who produced 69 PhDs in mathematics. One of the PhDs was uh, a Courant, Richard Courant, who came to find the, found the, uh, the, the one of the most uh, respectable mathematicians in the world, which is the Courant Institute of Mathematical Sciences, 
in New York University. Okay? That was David Hilbert's student. Okay? One of his PhD students. But David Hilbert also made a name for himself through the study of invariance. Okay? Invariance, you know, he studied and made some very serious contributions. He was searching for the ultimate invariant, that's the GIJ, but he couldn't find it. So they knew that the position number 26 would either belong to Hilbert or Yibo, but they know that he had some results that earned him the, uh, the last of the great mathematicians because they never thought mathematics could be brought in together ever again because they have shredded it into theories. And as I was coming across in the, in the graduate school, I was, I was expressing a lot of pain at what the whole dynamics, okay? They, they, they divided everything up into, into, into uh, theories. But there's no, no, no theory does not belong in mathematics, in geometry. It has, you start with the conjecture and you prove it, or if you don't prove it, hey, you leave it alone. Okay? That's not mathematics. Mathematics is 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. So they have all these theories, they call number theories, numbers, all these sort of things. And, and, and so that was painful for me. But God, so therefore, when they were calling him the last of the great mathematicians, they thought mathematic, mathematics cannot be one subject ever again. But what God has done through God was to prove that not only all of mathematics is one in terms of gij, j equal to zero, which says all theorems, which is every reality, and all equations that represent such realities, past, present, and future, originate out of one invariant, gi, proven infallibly to be God, with orthogonal components gij, and a divergence of gij comma j equal to zero. That is the totality of mathematics. But so then one says, well, what about physics? Well, first of all, physics is an application of mathematics. That's one. Uh, number two, the highest level of any subject that you can understand has to be in terms of a geometry, geometry. That's the science of the ancient Africans. Geometry, ja or jaw. I say vocabulary, an African black vocabulary. Ja, geometry is the study of God. So it, that has to be the ultimate plus, the definition of God that says God is the one unbounded space time of intelligence that we call the universe, which can't expand. That is the totality of everything. So whatever you call knowledge has to be the study of that system. And since that system is space-time, that is geometry. So therefore, your ultimate understanding, even of history, has to be a study of geometry. It's the a, a, a trajectories of, of, on a particular, particular subject over space-time. That is geometry. Therefore, the ultimate level of understanding of any subject, whether it be medicine or anything, has to be ma or geometry. Geometry or ma -a. Ma, that's another African word for knowledge of the proven truth. Ma, that's where the word mathematics comes from. Ma, that's M-A or M-A-A. Okay? So, therefore, that is the basis on which... Um, you understand which every knowledge, because people can, are very quick to say, well, Yibo, well, you know, you're just a mathematician, so you can't say anything about history. You're dead wrong. That GIJ can represent every form of reality or every form of materialization. Okay? Everyone, there's nothing that's left out. So when Albert Einstein was asking for a university theory, he wasn't really thinking that you could study uh, history from GIJ, okay, or the, the, the universe theory. They were thinking about universe theory of physics. And since they had to use the symbols, they believed, well, it must be related to, uh, to mathematics. But they were not sure they were going to do the same thing with history. But, God, you know, God has decoded a lot of history already. One of them is 
the dynamics of religion. That have proved very clearly that all religions were the philosophy, you know, a holy philosophy of the black race. For example, Christianity. Christianity. Hello? Okay. Okay. Christianity has a central figure, the most important figure, name is uh, Jesus, which is a mispronunciation of Joshua. Joshua. Okay, Joshua. Joshua. Okay. Now, <laughs> God has decoded historically that Joshua is a name, vocabulary of the Gala people, the black people. What you call the Falashas. Okay? From Kemet and Ethiopia. Okay? Joshua, I speak that language. A version that is spoken in Ida, where I was born, in, in, in the Igala, Igala Empire. The word Joshua means God is the Savior. That's what it means in Igala. So when they say that is Hebrew, that Hebrew word came through the Falashas that today have been disrespected, you know, among, among uh, I mean, in, in Israel. Because that's my language. That's a Gala language. That's a black person's language. It means, it's a, a sentence that says, Jah, so meaning God does it for us. God solves our problem for us, which is another way of saying God is the Savior. That is number one. So that's the most important name in Christianity. Is a black African, Falasha, Gala. Gala word. And of course, so then there's another name that's important in Christianity, which is uh, the first pope. That's uh, Peter. Peter. Peter was the first pope. Now, Peter... They say it means rock. From this rock, I build my church. Well, guess what's the vocabulary for rock in Igala, the same language? It's Peter. Peter is a vocabulary for rock in the language that I speak, which is the Gala, black Falasha language. This is geometry. This is, ge this is reality. So that means... The Hebrew, as they transformed to Europe and other places, where they, they began with Falashas, the Africans, the black people. So then, what about God, God's self? Well, God, first of all, G and J are the same letter. Okay? They're the same letter. So the vocabulary for God in African language is Ja. Have the Rastas calling, you know, Ja. Ja, that's, that's the word. You can put a qualifier like O behind it or anything like that, but the word is Ja. J A or J O. Okay? So, when you say, so that's the vocabulary in Nigala or the African, you know, vocabulary, the ancient African vocabulary is Ja. So, the Europeans couldn't call it Ja, they call it Ga or God. That's where God comes from, it's from Ja, the African. Vocabulary for God, which automatically proves that the whole concept of God came from Africa infallibly. This is geometry. Now, in addition, um, what about Islam? What's the biggest name in Islam? Muhammad. 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 Well, where does the word Muhammad come from? Again, guess it's going to be Gala. It's called Ma, Ma, Amama. Amama. That's the vocabulary in Gala. Amama, first of all, Ama means one that knows or a genius or one that uh, understands bigger, more than an average entity around them, which is a genius or a prophet. That's what Amma means. That's Gala today. 
So when you repeat it, Amma, Ma, Muhamma, that is a dollar of vocabulary. And it's a tradition that dated to the way, way, way back to the beginning of time. Because Africans understood knowledge is a revelation from God. So therefore, when one member of the society understands more than others, they are recognized as geniuses or prophets because their knowledge of the truth is a revelation from God. And so God gets credit for their getting a revelation from God. So the way they recognize it is to give them a title. Amama. That is a tradition of the ancient African. Whenever you see a genius, you recognize them with the word Amama, okay, or Ama, okay? Now, that tradition continued from uh, way back when, and I became, I, I mean, my, when God revealed God got unto me, the Pata, which is the Pharaoh, the Gala Pata, the Pharaoh, recognized me consistent with that tradition. They awarded me what was called Amamo, or short was Amo Kidojo. So my name, my title is Mohammed. That was conferred on me in 2004 by the Fatah, which is the equivalent of the Pharaoh. That's what the Pharaoh was supervising during those days in the ancient times, is to recognize geniuses or prophets or ones with extraordinary knowledge of the truth with the title Amamor. So that's how Muhammad in Islam got his title. Okay? The title means the one with the big revelation from God or a prophet or a genius. So with this, see, this is, I'm telling history now. I'm decoding history for you exactly. Therefore, this is application of Gaga. And you cannot dispute that. Because we talk about tradition that continue from ancient uh, period and then is still happening today. And personally, that God was recognized as qualifying me to be not only a prophet, but the ultimate prophet because God, the entire revolution was given to me. So the title that I was given by the Atar was the, the, one, the genius within. Okay, that genius that God gave us a blessing from through God. Right among the black people. That's the type. And the guy, the fatah that did that is highly decorated because he has been honored by the royals in England with the, what I believe to be the highest honor to any foreign government or any, any foreigner at all, which is the commander of the British Empire, CBE. President Ronald Reagan, in comparison, got OBE, Order of the British Empire. Okay? You know, and Colin Powell got OBE as well. But the Atar who conferred me with this thing was respected with something higher than Ronald Reagan and, and you know, so. But you may not know about the Fatah, but because somewhere in England they understand that he is the president of the Pharaoh. They gave him the very highest award, the commander of the British Empire. So, so now he awarded me. In fact, if you see the picture of the Patan myself, he was wearing that CBE medal. Okay? So he conferred that on me to prove that this terminology that people have come across came from us. And so, you know, but the whole world can borrow it and use it. So what does this all mean? It means that the assassination of Sister Bland, Brother McDowell, um, um, Brother uh, Sergeant James Brown, and and uh, you know and uh, Brother Day, young Brother Day, is not only against the order of God. It's uh, it's it's not it's embarrassing. It's horrible, and that's why God sent Gagat. But it is also happening because black people, okay, black people have not digested Gagat, which is why God ordered the black people to uh, basically erect 
a monument. The government of this land has to erect a monument to recognize the ultimate blessing to, to, the, to the universe, which is God. Because every time from the times of our ancestors, any time God revealed things to us that give us a better understanding of the universe than previously, we are red monuments. The most famous of all the monuments in the history is the pyramid. Pyramid was a monument erected as a result of the gift of chemistry or black magic and geometry. That was the basis of, of the erection of the monument. So now, today, of course, um, you know, uh, Albert Einstein, E minus MC squared is equal to zero, or what you normally know as E equal to MC squared, also has a monument in Berlin. Now, given that, as an equation, it is only one out of a trillion, infinite number of equations, correct equations that are in Gagat, the main fact you have a monument in Berlin for E equals MC squared automatically qualifies Gaga to have infinite number of monuments globally. Therefore, your listeners must take it as a call of duty to go to the police stations, to go to the town halls, to go to the presidency and say, well, if you are serious about black lives, if you really uh, understand black people to have any value, then very clearly, if you are interested in protecting black lives, you must erect monuments in every city and every little town in this country. That's the minimum that black people can accept. The reason Sandra Bland and all these wonderful young geniuses have been listed, not to mention those that are being gassed, I mean, have been thrown in prisons, is because Jim Crow falsified our image as three-fifths of human beings. The proper figure of nine over six or, you know, uh, three over two must be presented, which is a, approximately, like I said before, a revision and a reversing of the three-fifths to be five-thirds. You take the lower number and put it on top. So Jim Crow falsified that. He, he changed reality. He inverted reality. And that is consistent with what I said before. When you, when you change a number that's supposed to be 5 over 3 into 3 over 5, you've turned the geometry upside down, which says that the Europeans being made to look there on top at 19, eighters of 19, and we who were eighters of uh, uh, 20, 28, according to Yale, are put in the bottom where God, that is eighters of infinity, and you know, of course, myself on the human level, God uh, can't be compared to me. God is out, out, you know, God is real, so we can't even compare with God. Mine is, is all transformation. Intelligence is a transformation because intelligence is what we get from God to transform from God to us. So even though my level is infinity, I'm nowhere near, near God because I have to wait for my transformation before I know reality. God knows reality and feels reality in God's veins. So that's a total difference. But the number, it has of infinity, is real. You know, it has of, it has of infinity for me. But so therefore, I go underneath, uh, you know, underneath the rest of the black people. It's upside down. And what is very clearly contradictory, totally, that said that is a fraud, is God will go even below me. That's the world that we've been living in up until this point. And when Sandra Bland, in his African attire, by the way, the, 
the filming of her, where they were terrorizing her, they refused to show her African attire properly. She was wearing African attire to show she was conscious of who she is. Which, according to Jim Crow law, is illegal. That's why they went after him. I mean, after her. Now, but that is against God's order. If you can't create even an ant, you shouldn't be blowing any lives away. That doesn't make any sense. Plus, because the rest of the world depends on the black race, they're going to, they're, to taking that approach of killing the most intelligent among human family is suicidal. That is extraordinary. That's suicidal. That because that's you. You're trying to kill your survival. It's like them lynching, and they tried Professor uh, Washington Carver. If they had lynched him before that period where he he saved their life, they would have been dead. So the murder of of Sandra Bland and all these other brothers and sisters. It's really a suicide on the part of the non-blacks. It's an attempt at committing suicide, which is why God sent Gagan. Okay? To reverse the thing so that, you know, the God order, which is the only authority in the entire universe, must be not only functioning, but must be realized. And then everybody can live happily thereafter. The non-blacks rule in the world, the next level will be to let the chimpanzees rule the world. It's, it's called, they're taking the world from civilization to tigerization. Tiger. You so-called conquer. What the hell are you conquering? God didn't conquer or God conquered like God conquered the world or on behalf of the black people, conquered the rest of the world. The racial wars, race wars and all that have already been done through Gagat. Because the purpose of every war is to determine who is the most intelligent, who is more intelligent. Since God has ordained you the ultimate intelligence on behalf of the black people, that has been decided forever. It doesn't matter how many people you kill. That can't change anymore. That's the geometry. So that's why God now has ordered the black race to regroup group and other members of the human family and all creatures to regroup come December, the 25th anniversary on 28th of December. You must gather, you know, in Hampton, uh, 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 you know, a Holiday Inn in Hopper, New York, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the God Order. The IJ comma J equal to zero. And to look at what has happened. Now I've been as I'm critical of the of Jim Crow, but Jim Crow has has done perhaps more than the rest of the black people in terms of dealing with the God order. Because they commissioned the the uh, the Yale study where they declared a scientific paper that black people are the most intelligent race. Okay, that's Jim Crow. President Clinton funded a, a, a study. So on the contrary, the black people haven't done much because they are so scared. Because they remember Jim Crow saying it is illegal for them to be themselves or act intelligent. So although that was created by Jim Crow, while well, Jim Crow is trying to do something, they did surrender the presidency to a black man as a result of it, and they said that in a cryptic message that says, Will Gagot or Gio Yibo issues influence the presidency elect, presidential election 2004? So it wasn't surprising that in 2008 you had a black president. Many people don't understand how Obama got into, into the White House. The man named White House clearly tells you no black person belongs there. And like I said before, the president cannot, presidency cannot be dictated on the basis of affirmative action. It has to be intelligent. Intelligence that guides that process. So it wasn't until they were convinced 
the black race are the most intelligent race through Gagat, where you had Obama, black president, being taken as a serious presidential candidate. In 1988, President, uh, president Hopeful, uh, Jesse Jackson, was, was told he was not considered a serious candidate. That's two years before the court order arrived. And uh, when you talk about debate, uh, you know, uh, 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 Reverend Jackson is a better debater than President Obama. So it, if it was based on, uh, you know, he would have come in. But then the God order wasn't here yet. That's what happened. So now you've been called on to gather in her path to bring everybody to celebrate the God order. That's the only order, the final order, the first order, the only order. Not world orders and all this other stuff by humans or other creatures. That cannot be survived. There's too much happening right now that shouldn't happen. The killing, the, the most secret thing with us is life. Life. There's enough ignorance that is killing life already through uh, poor research in medicine and all the other limitations of the current medicine. That if you claim on the one hand, that you establish medicine in order to save lives, and you turn around in a war and you destroy the same lives, that not only is inconsistent, it's hypocritical. Because you don't see God do that. And then at some point, people go ahead and blame God for death. That is wrong. That's unfair to God, and that's ignorant. There is no mother that I know, a rational human mother, that would go through a nine months and come through a delivery process that, you know, that endangers her life, only to want such a child that come out of that, you know, pregnancy to be dead and be responsible for the death of such a, such a child. That's the proof that God, who is a super mother, or ultimate mother cannot create a human being or any other creature and wish that creature to die. That's the absolutely infallible proof of God does, is not responsible for our death. Ignorance, like the kind Jim Crow shows, however, kills. Ignorance is the only reason we die. So that now calls for this summit on 28th of December. The registration, of course, is, you need to go on the, on the, on the website now and register. I got on Google and so on, like uh, Brother Glover indicated, we'll go to the donation page. And while you're on the donation page, you will see a formula there that encourages everyone in the world uh, to donate. And the reason we say donation, even though we, we give you service for it, uh, is that nobody can really pay for our services because they're too valuable which is consistent with the value of the black life, the most valuable. They don't just matter. They're the most precious, period. Okay? So now you go in and register because now the, it costs $550, you know, special price that is given. And, you know, the immediate thing based on the old world order is for black people to say, well, listen, you know, that's my month's salary or a year's salary for some people. I can afford it. You're dead wrong. By reordaining you or declaring you the most intelligent race, you become automatically the richest race. Your money, however, may not be in the Jim Crow dollar, but your money is in the superior dollar, which is intelligence. The only thing money can be used for is to buy intelligence. So if you have the raw intelligence, it's like having a pound sterling, your money in pound sterling. Just because you don't have a dollar does not make you poor. You simply exchange the pound sterling for the, for the dollar that you, that you need at a given particular situation. That's how you're going to register for the briefing. And every child can register to come into that child. Uh, that, that, and it doesn't matter. Everybody's invited. But you have to gather so you can review the God order. Ordain him with ultimate intelligence, it has been, or it has of infinity, 
where NA stars are being exactly represents intelligence. And with the end design, in my case, will be infinity. Jim Crow has found the end for black people to be 28. That's certainly an underestimation. And the end for intelligence of the non-blacks as, as 19. So that's part of the God order. So that there's a peaceful transition of leadership from the non-blacks to the blacks is the only way you can do it. There is no need for guns and bombs and all those, even though <laughs> you understand. You see, going after black people is, 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 is suicidal in, an, in another way. It's suicidal. Because the black people, even without God, God have enough brains to create a bomb that would destroy this planet. But with God, God that is definitely verified. How do you know that was possible? Yes, try cover. When the people were starving, except it's the reverse. It's, in the, uh, it's a creative thing. It's, uh, it's, his large intelligence was demonstrated by protecting life rather than destroying life. He demonstrated a constructive intelligence. The bomb is a destructive intelligence, which is why God brought in the God order. God never destroys anything. Okay? God is creative God, constructive God, not destructive God. So where they, whatever the idea of, well, let's so-called conquer come from, that is unfortunate. That is, is not only devilish, and devil means abscess of intelligence. That's what the devil, there's nothing to brag about. You know, you don't go conquering people. The way you conquer people is like the way God has conquered the world for, for the black people. Intelligence. That's what makes God put God in charge, intelligence. The same way, ironically, that they will not elect uh, a person, you know, who is not intelligent because they, they want a quota. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. The person has to be intelligent. So intelligence is the bottom line in terms of who becomes a leader. So that is what God has ordered, and everybody is invited to come into that December register. Now, how do you register if you can have a Jim Crow dollar? Well, you use the real dollar, the God currency. That's how you register. Because let's say that you don't have $500, $550, okay? And this particular part is very critical for black people who've lost some of their survival uh, tools, like unity. God forced this order in terms of gathering in December to celebrate and prepare for a monument for gathering. Because God was tired of having black people being lynched. It's not all against God order, it's against the interests of the rest of the black people, I mean, the rest of humanity. You don't destroy, it's like going to destroy God. If you destroy God, you can't breathe, you're dead. That's why we call it suicide. That's why I said, if you have destroyed power, all the people in the South would have been, would have been dead. The good thing, you know, that although they attacked him a lot, but they didn't spare his life. But, you know, he saved their lives later on. So what we're doing right now in killing Sandra Bland is, is suicidal. That's, that's not making sense. There's no condition where life, taking of life, makes any sense. Of course, when somebody's after their own life, maybe that could be excused somewhat. But not otherwise. So you come in there, so let's say you don't have money. Let's say, let's go to the extreme. People who have money, uh, uh, Jim Crow dollar, can go and do the, you know, the, the registration and, you know, make full payment. But if you only have half of it, God now compels you, says it is God's order that you attend that briefing. God has given you Every tool you need not to attend the meeting. So let's say all you have is $275. God now has ordered you to get hold of another black person. I say, brother, how much you got? I have 275 If you have 275 you combine that and register. You've done what you didn't think was going to be doable. Okay? 
You come together and in love, in unity, the virtue that you were robbed of by Jim Crow, you were divided before you were conquered, and you stayed divided while you were so-called conquered. By ordering you to go to the briefing, lifesaver breathing, I mean briefing, God has now reordered you back to unity again. When you're talking to the brother and say, listen, let's pull our resources together, you are uniting people like Professor uh, uh, Malcolm dedicated their life to the unity of black people and a lot of other people. Because he recognized that is why, how we stayed as prisoners of war. Because we are not allowed to unite. Another thing is that Sandra Bland, our mother, daughter, wife, and, and sister, when she was being attacked and being uh, killed, she called out for us, especially black men who are supposed to be protecting her. And nobody showed up. Because there's no unity. The police that was killing Sandra Bland were united. It wasn't enough that it was, it was a male police. A male police that started attacking her. But he asked, he called for enforce, reinforcement. And they came in large numbers. That's how they prevail over her. Even though she's a girl, a woman. You don't have that kind of thing. That's why you could not win a war. Which is why God gave you the ultimate tool to forge unity. United we stand and divided we fall. We were divided. That was what was response. Not in our homeland, of course. In the homeland we were attacked. But over here and elsewhere where we have become prisoners of war, the reason we couldn't you know, get rid of that quick enough was because they kept us divided. So, you can see it's a broad order for you to gather in December to give glory to God. You don't really, I mean, do you understand? it's something you normally do naturally without being preached to. But I'm in order to remind you that is your culture. So you're going to gather. So if they're only, if, if all you have is $50, you need to gather and unify and unite with 10 other brothers and sisters. In the process, you become unified as a force. And if the police was attacking one of those 10, the police will have to deal with uh, one of those 11, the police will have to deal with all, all 11 of you. It's not as easy. For the police to even rationalize attacking 10 people at the same time, or 11 people at the same time. So you lack unity is one of the reasons why you've been lynched. So the solution to that unity, of course, or the, the unity problem is, it begins with the God got life-saving and Roman hypothesis briefing. You come in there united. But even before that, they may find that you, you likely to have a challenge with Getting the Jim Crow dollars to register now says that, okay, you compel them to come together and unite. When you unite, you share the burden of any project. Okay? So technically, you know, 11 would only need $50 per person. That is extremely affordable. But you can even stretch it to higher numbers. You can actually find 550 people, in which case, because God ordered that through the, the briefing. God says every black person must attend that, that briefing in order to protect your life. So, therefore, God makes it extremely affordable. If you have 550 people, all you need is a, a dollar per person. One dollar is all you need. Nobody can say they cannot afford a dollar. But in the process, you would engage in unity because you have to talk to another brother who has, 
uh, a dollar. It can happen in, in, in a matter of 10 minutes. You could find 550, you know, each one, uh, teach many, you know, two of you, and then you divide it up. You do, you know, in a, in a, the, the, you get uh, 550 together. All you need is give one dollar uh, $1 each. You go on PayPal, you register that. So now, that is a proof this is a God order because it's very simple for you to do. The only way you can do it is if you not understand the geometry that I'm presenting right now. Your life depends on the briefing. The briefing is also an opportunity for us to mourn together the transforming of all these potential legendary young brothers and sisters because God has had enough. So you go right now to the website, to the donation page, you know, even if you want to do, give the, whatever minimum amount is allowed, put your own thing over there. And, you know, you could imagine how many people are going to come with you. Depending on how much money you can spare right now will determine how many people are going to be in your group. And once you get started, it's easy to communicate with another brother, another sister. Well, I've done it already. I need to cooperate with you. I need to build a unity back with you so we can, you know, have a, a lesson burden in terms of doing a God order. So therefore, you can't really, the only thing you can blame right now is not understanding what I'm presenting right, right now to you. It's extremely critical. In the process, you're going to demand New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, L.A., okay, Chicago, Detroit, okay, um, you know, Jackson, Mississippi, you're going to demand the Gagot monuments to be put up there immediately. Because the absence of Gagot monument, which by default, the absence of it by default, puts you in a Jim Crow three-fifths of a human being image. And so nobody has any problems blowing your life away. That has been ordered, stopped immediately. So, and what you do is, you're going to prepare to come to the, you're going to, you need to go to the city hall, meet with the mayors and say, look, the Iman Assembly Square uh, uh, monument is in Berlin. Therefore, New York is overdue. You've got to talk to the police headquarters and say, look, we don't blame you. The reason you killing us is you have no idea what our real identity is. Our real identity is embodied in the GIJ command equal to zero. That becomes part of the so-called cultural diversity training for the police. They have to learn that the black people are represented by GIJ command equal to zero. Just like the Jewish people are represented by him and the MC squared is equal to zero. Just like the whites were represented by white Anglo-Saxon Protestant were represented by GM1, M2, minus FR squared is equal to zero. That's Newton's fault. Therefore, that's what you have to get your formula. The mother of all these formulas, past, present, and the future. There is Absolute no reason for anybody to lynch a black life right now. That's a God order. Unless humanity wants to commit suicide in more than one way. First, you get rid of your brain, your, your intelligent group, and then you, you just die naturally. Picture where we were when Carver came, you know, was sent as a messenger to save our lives through doing the black magic. Of 325 different products from peanut butter alone. Think about it, America. If you had killed Carver, then you would have starved to death. So you want to continue killing the black people and Carver's children, grandchildren, and grand the cousins, and so on? You that means you don't value your own life. That's what it really means. You can't really do much without black people. So that is the order of God. And you're coming down to, to Hapag and 
and go over that. You should have parties, you have all kinds of things to know that the God order is the only order, not anybody else's personal order. And the bombs and guns and all that have their place. It's not supposed to be used for killing human beings. And the way God has done it, you don't even have to kill any life. You can get your food and everything from the air. Just as like Carver gave you life through the peanut butter, God has given to you already something as simple as the distilled water being redefined by actually being defined by God through God, God as the only water that needs to be consumed by human beings. Before God, God you never saw distilled water in a supermarket. The only thing this water was being used was for batteries and mixing of 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 of, uh, of props. So there, that is what God has ordered us to drink because it's the healthiest water that comes out of garden. Okay? And with him and the San Francisco Square 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 was Manhattan Project, where the Jewish people, okay, after they were rescued, the Jewish people were rescued from the gas chambers by E minus MC squared is equal to zero. As soon as the monument of that formula was put in place, the lynching of the Jews stopped immediately. Because the God order for the Jews says the Jewish people are not gas chamber material. They're precious human creatures. I was the, 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 the code is how you know it comes from God. The East West MC squared is, is a God language because it's correct. Therefore, that's God order to say, look, these people are precious. Leave them alone. Pull them out of the gas chamber. That's what happened. Therefore, Im and SMC squared equal to zero spelt never again for the Jewish people. Never. That's what it's meant when they say never again would you lynch a Jewish person. For the black race, G I J comma J equal to zero spells never again. So if it appears that it's still happening, it's because the black people are not aware of what G I J comma J equal to zero as a result of Jim Crow making it illegal for them to know the truth. What we call here acquired intelligence deficiency syndrome. There's nothing to brag about. That's a sickness. But God has busted that. You know, God busted that through Gagot. So you have to now, that's why you got to go and meet with Jim Crow. You go to the police commissioner and say, Mr. Commissioner, yes, we don't call it your individual fault per se, but what you're doing is wrong. Because you got the wrong image of the black race. We're not buffoons. We're the most intelligent creature, set of creatures. And, and for you, that has to be incorporated in your uh, cultural diversity education in the, police, in the police college. So you know that black people, and they need to, you need to pull black people. The gas chambers for us includes the lynching on the streets by the police, as well as in the, in the prisons. Most of our geniuses are in the prison because... Jim Crow, or, you know, it, it declared being a genius is a crime for black people because that will destroy the, the entire system. But the order comes from God. No human being can go against God. And you don't want to push black people till they develop a Afro-Cogian bomb, which is in the souls of the black people. Then that becomes the, 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 the worst nightmare. We don't want to go into Armageddon. If God wanted Armageddon, God wouldn't create, that, create us at all. God, the only reason we created is to glorify the Almighty God. That glorification it uses intelligence that God gives you a piece of. That's the peace of God. That intelligence must be demonstrated by blacks and non-blacks. 
So you can't be consumed with so much fear that you are allowing your life to be taken away from you. That is not right. No, Jim Crow, do you have any reason to be taking a life? You didn't create life. Nobody should have to take any life. But we have no problem with cancer. We have no problem with AIDS. We don't have solution for them except through Gagat. You want to concentrate on Gagat and find solutions that allows everybody to glorify the Almighty God. The packing order and the order of God, that has to be followed. Black people can't call anybody master. That's our vocabulary. The master. The star of intelligence. That's, that's, that's our vocabulary. So we can't call anybody else master. Not when you have eight as of 19. And by your own uh, research results, you have us as eight as of 28. 28 is bigger than 19 any day. By a factor of almost 1.5. So the realities are very clear. I will give everybody their credits in terms of Jim Crow. Hey, has shown some understanding by revising you know, their, their intelligence uh, studies in Yale and putting black people in a relatively uh, more realistic position. I would thank the Daskupta saying, where there's a caste system in India, they have the black people right at the bottom. So say Oyibo is closer to God than any of us, any other preacher, which turned the caste system upside down. Black people are now on top of the caste system. The world has been, has been changed permanently. That's about order. That's what we're talking about right now. So, and it's only then that the world can rise on to the, the level that God has designed the world to be. Otherwise, we will stagnate and, and die of ignorance. We have children that need a future. That future has to be based on intelligence, the peace of God in us. So that's what this, this particular uh, 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 you know, episode or presentation is, is being ordered by God to bring to the attention of the world. It's extremely important that we came here. There's a purpose. And like I said, that purpose is one. One purpose, which is to glorify the Almighty God. And that glory cannot happen if we don't have intelligence. Or if we play games and talk about we're conquering God. We can't conquer God. And the first, you know, first premise on that basis is to think you can conquer black people. You can't conquer black people. If the black people pretended to, to have lost the war, that's only temporary. Of course, that's the very nature of war anyway. Of the many fights that have, been, have gone on in history, the, 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 the fight is still going on. That's why God gave the one solid way to decide the end of that war. Okay? Which is Gagat. Because Gagat now proves infallibly the black race are the, are the victors. You know, they've won the ultimate war which is to prove who is the most intelligent, which of the segments of humanity is the most intelligent, but more importantly, which set of God's creatures are the most, in, uh, most intelligent, which is the black race, because no other segment, no other set of, of uh, black race on behalf of humanity. Humanity now can, can prove what has been assumed in the holy books and all the other stuff that says God is at the top of creation, Okay? This God is the only way that we can prove that. So for us as a unit, in terms of human family unit, we ought to celebrate Gaga, which is why the call for December gathering is, is important. And like, like I said, you can tell it is a God order because it is affordable. It is affordable. All you need is a penny. But when you have a penny, you, that, God gave you a beautiful way to engage other black people, other people. So you pull resources together. 
and build the unity which you've lost 2,500 years ago. United we stand, divided we fall. That's the motto of this country, which was lifted up by, you know, from, our, from us as a people, with the king of philosophies, okay? And with the king of Ma, the Ma, one of our, one of our uh, you know, civilization was called Ma civilization. That was before Kemet. Ma means intelligence which is a word that is called civilization. Civilization is not, is the difference between civilization and terrorism. We never so-called conquer people. Conquering is a dynamics where you actually steal from people, not only their belongings, but their rights. Because you have a gun, you tell them to surrender their wealth, their physical wealth onto you, or give their uh, uh, intellectual wealth onto you for free, that doesn't really make you rich. It means you're robbing people, and you could do it more constructively by learning. Okay, you could extend your 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 own value, intellectual value, by learning. It's not by robbing people. Robbery is not in African culture. That is that is that that is not respected at all. That is that is considered very low. It shows you are inferior to steal from someone because otherwise you could develop your own thing. So when you have to abandon and you have to go looking for somebody else, it so shows limitations of your own system. And you can get around that by actually trying to learn how to do things. Black people can make the best cars, but Jim Crow does not allow them, which has been ended. If you don't allow black people to design cars, you know, to get not only the, the fastest speed, but safest speed. There's a GIJ for that. Let's go test the rest of the world. But black people, is in their blood. They can understand. A, a little girl like seven years old can understand Gaga to the point, you know, where to the point she can go to Harvard and teach Harvard professors that diagnostical, you know, diagnostic or diagnostical chemistry. Okay? Seven years old. So it's in the blood of the black people, okay? I mean, and that has shown throughout history. Professor uh, Andrew J. Beard invented rocket science and rocketry. And if you read anything on him, it was stated he did not have a formal education. The father of rocketry has no formal education, meaning no other person taught him anything other than the black, his black genes and his black, black background, black heritage. That's what we call genius. It's in the blood. Okay? The same way, uh, you know, any number. Carver, of course, very clear. Okay? Booker T. Wash, uh, Washington. You know, a genius of creating, a, trying to create a, 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 a Timbuktu here in the West which eventually was stolen and, and everything misappropriated, okay? Or any number of legendary black people that, you know, black people themselves don't even, even try to remember, okay? From Jesse Owen to <coughs> Hussein Bolt and, and to uh, Malcolm and to Boris Bishop, Thomas Sankara, Fred Hampton, and Steve Biko. Okay? And some of my own relatives, immediate relatives, that Tom Marga, for example, was a legend that, that he, he refused to recognize the so-called Berlin Conference because he saw the uh, Gottingen Conference coming. Okay? He saw Gottingen coming, you know, and so he said, look, you will find out in the Gottingen Conference. So I'm not going to recognize Berlin Conference of where you divide up our land without even our permission or our participation and thinking that that's going to stay. No, it's not going to stay. So he engaged them in a fight, and that played a role in the so-called Emancipation Proclamation because his son, the general, Aqua Garu, had the plantation for, for the non-blacks who were trying to attack the, uh, the empire. So blacks, black people do not feed the illusion of Jim Crow that we're three-fifths of human beings. 
or the, or the other, non black. That is what God ended forever through Gaga. So it is extremely important, and, and I'd like the audience to, to ask questions, because this point is extremely important. What I'm delivering is the God order, because these are absolute, uh, absolutely fallible truths. That's, that's, and I have to tell you something. Absolute truth in terms of Gaga is the only way you can get into heaven. And the proof of that is extremely simple. What kind of people get into heaven? It's not the people who are loaded with fraud and lies. It doesn't matter how much you pray. Of course, prayer will take you somewhere. But until you're born again in God in terms of the truth, until you can speak the language of absolutely infallible truth, you can't get into heaven. Because think about it. Who is the most prominent resident of heaven? God. That God is the language of God. You can't go and be living with a, 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 a landlord that speaks one language and, that you can't speak. God is the landlord of heaven. God's language is gathered. Okay? So, you have to learn the language of gathered before you can have a chance at going to heaven. As the bottom line. So you have to get used unless you like to go through the whole process over and over and over before you really get a, 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 a real place to, 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 to remain, which is everyone likes to think of heaven. And heaven is a state of existence. Not just some kind of uh, building and all the other stuff. It's a state of existence. And for you to be in heaven, that state has to be gargotical. It has to be like 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. Not 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 5. That's not heaven. That's hell. That's why the world is, is, is right and suffering in terms of you know, because everything is, is propaganda and fraud, that only contains pain. That's not reality. So I, I you know, I like to invite, you know, your, your audience to actually ask questions, because I don't know how much time we're left with, but ask them questions. They can call in uh, whenever you think they can call in, you know, because I like to answer questions. Okay, okay, okay. Um, you that other piece of South Carolina. Uh, you that other piece of South Carolina, you have any questions? My people from South Carolina. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, yes, brother. Um, I, I, I enjoy. This is our Minister John Henry called up mom. Um, Georgetown, South Carolina. Um, it's very interesting what uh, the brother is saying. And I definitely uh, take note on it and keep it in my vista. I want to thank you for sharing your insight and your um, ideology of the way you perceive or think that um, our God exists in each and every one of us. So with, you know, respect to that, um, I give honor and respect to your saying. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, brother. Okay. Uh, I'm about to open up the call for North Georgia. North Georgia, you're now unmuted. Do you have any questions? I do. I want to thank you for a platform. My name is Miriam. I am calling from uh, Comcast Studios 25, Atlanta, Georgia. And I just want to speak in behalf of my family who sent me, the Yamasee Native American. And I am also part of the uh, legal team for Reverend Dr. Malachi of York. And I just wanted to extend my gratitude in behalf of my family and also to uh, the, the brother who was speaking. I did take notes myself. I also have spoken with the minister, uh, Mr. Minister Henry, who was just on the line, 
And I just want to just, I want to extend myself. I want to reach out any way that I can um, be of, of help. I am producing a show called Not Guilty, and that starts with um, Mr. York, and it also starts with all of Nubian people in America, especially young boys from the age of seven to uh, the age of 70, uh, because what I have found in my study is, is that um, the Nubian man is the one that is uh, at the brink of extinction. So um, myself, along with Reverend York, he's always been in um, constant concern about the, the prisoners and the uh, high number of incarcerations. And he knew this when before he even got incarcerated. His real reason from the things that he taught me was to go in and use the Star of David to unlock the um the curse and the spell that has been put on our people by using that star and then interlocking it into the five point star which is like the representation of the um the goat or the bafamit you know maybe i'm not pronouncing it correctly but the five point star would be locked inside a six point star and we know that the star, the six point star is the star of David, and he's given us explanation of all of that, and King Solomon, and going into all of those different things. Well, he taught me law, and so he gave me remedies uh, along the way to be able to help him today. So, my name, my tribal name is Ma'at Rehat, and my uh, name that my father gave me by birth is Miriam Canty. So um, in between that, I came up with Mir I Am's production. And so through Comcast Studios 25, I'm able to tell my story, write my book, and use every form of communication from Facebook, Instagram, you know, every form. And that is what we use as a platform to try him. We have tried him in the media, and he already won. So I would love to be at any summit. I'll be on the front line, but I'm not standing by myself. You know, I will stand on the front line, but I'm not standing. I'm not stepping out there no more to be hit with no water hoses, to be to be ate up by some people's dogs and the big billy club. That day is over. I'm not John Lewis. I am not Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, which I call Honorable Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. I call Honorable Elijah Muhammad just that. Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I am sending out and and sending out a message to Honorable uh, Lewis Minister Farrakhan. I am extending uh, my gratitude to you for staying strong for our community and and not folding, you know. So I really I thank you, and I am a child and a product of Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I grew up two blocks from uh, the Final Call, which is in Chicago, Illinois. And my family's still there, where we were right there by Leo High School. So I, as a child, uh, did witness the Honorable Elijah Muhammad raise our women up and tell them that they didn't have to prostitute their bodies, and nor did um, our Nubian men have to be pimps. And, and that's where I saw it start, where he said, create your own fish markets, create your own, you know, toothpaste, create your own economy and live of, for, and by one another. And he did say to the nation of Islam, follow the lamb wherever it is that he goes. And we know that the lamb is Dr. Malachi Z. York, which is just simply referred to as York. But his family stems from the uh, Ben York, which is his great-grandfather, and his mother is Mary C. York. And they go into telling you how they're full-blooded Native Americans. And then he stands back to tell us as Nubian people who we are. You know, is our as the brother explained earlier, is our family member. We are the tribe of Judah. So I just wanted to give you that. I am a Gullah Geechee, which I understand when he said Gullah, how that goes into Judah or either goes into uh, Muhammad. And and I re- I wrote as much of it down as I could. So okay, I want to just extend thank my you thank you. Very much. Thank, thank you very you. much for the feedback. Right. That's a second, uh, ma'am. Hello. 
Uh, yes. Okay, um, South yeah. Carolina, South, South, Southern California, anybody from Southern California have any um, questions or comments? I know, I was just listening in. Okay, thanks for calling in. All right, um, we got somebody else from can South you hear Carolina. Me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Who is, who is this? I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, Arthur Chisholm. Uh, I just wanted to pass word right quick to the lady in Atlanta because I have a television show on Comcast also, Comcast C2 on here in Charleston, South Carolina, and I was brought in by Brother Henry uh, in Georgetown. But I wanted her to please contact me. You can reach me on uh, YouTube, AC Funtime TV, on YouTube, AC Funtime TV, on YouTube, and on Facebook, Arthur Chisholm. Please do get in touch with me, make friends with me, and I will contact uh, anyone else through uh, Brother Henry out of Georgetown because I know we're running out of time and I don't want to stay, and someone else may want to have a word. But again, my name is Arthur Chisholm. I do have a television show here on Comcast in Charleston, South Carolina. It's called AC Funtime TV. And what we do, we talk to people in the community about issues that we deal with, and we spotlight our local entertainers. And um, I would like to, I'm going to let someone else speak now. Okay. Um, just to keep in mind, my brother and sister who do have TV stations, um, it would be good if you guys would um, invite Dr. Gabriel Yibu to come down to you guys' studio because it's going to get message. It's it, it very, very, very important. Well, ha- have him have him please con- go to YouTube and and pull up Arthur. I'm at AC Funtime TV, or he can contact me on Facebook, Arthur Chisholm, or you can get in touch with me through uh, Minister Henry. Okay, I did thing. get your message, Mr. Chisholm. I did get your message. Okay. All right. Um. Uh... Southern California, anybody from Southern California have any questions, comments? Okay. Um, Southeast Missouri, have any questions, comments? Okay, okay. All right, well, we only got three minutes till closing. Uh, Dr. Gabriel Yebo, is there um, any last words you want to give the audience in closing? Yes. The closing is uh, like, a, um, you know, I can see power, you know, being expressed here. But you all need to register. Uh, go on the website, on our website, and go to the, um, the donation page. And like I said, those of you who are mathematical will see, you know, some of the things that justifies any donation, you know, more than justify. It's a formula there that, you know, uh, deals with numbers. And, and the number that's there on that website is actually, uh, uh, you cannot write it on any paper on the planet. You, it will take a whole universe, I'm sorry, the whole solar system or solar system to write out such a number. And so the question is, can anyone that includes the best professor of mathematics from Harvard and Cambridge and MIT and Stanford, if you could find anyone that can answer that question, uh, then we'll be delighted. Okay, it's there. Can you tell if that number there is a prime number or not and prove your answer? That, for our doctoral students here, they have to know how to answer that question before they could go into the doctoral program. That's how we compare with any other education system in the universe, okay? So, but, um, the, so you go in there, the telephone number here is 2631-242-3069. You are more than a mighty people. You are the chosen race. And Brother York, uh, I'd like the sister to pass it on to him that, um, you know, the, the part of the program that we hope to deal with at the uh, briefing is the putting, pushing our people into the gas chambers. Brother York does not belong, belong in prison. He belongs in the classroom to so teach. Therefore, but it won't happen until we get up the 
uh, the the uh, monument for Gaga, G I J comma J equal to zero, because the pyramid that Brother York was was working on is what needs to be continued for the G I J comma J equal to zero, which is the ultimate revelation. The monuments of pyramid were built in order to glorify God for the blessings that God has given to us in terms of the black magic and geometry. So now those black magic and geometry have taken to the ultimate level in Gagat. Therefore, a new level of pyramid, including the precision, taking to even higher ground, you know, in terms of the Gagat monument needs to be happening right away. And Brother York, like I said, we will make sure that we get him out of the prison, you know, because he doesn't belong there. Uh, you know, and a lot of things like that have happened to our people, you know, and in many ways, People even see his situation as being better than, uh, you know, people who are least outright, like Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland is, must be a turning point for us. Those cowardly assassinations of a brilliant black woman, our Thank mother. Thank you, everybody, for, for calling in to uh, Raw Authentic Media. Unfortunately, the call will have to end. Okay. Can you repeat that number, the last, that number? Uh, we have all those numbers uh, written down all right. for, that, uh, for all all right. other use of other references. I want to thank you, and, you, and I'll get, I, I'll give him. I want to give him the attorney so he can get a direct message to Reverend York himself. Thank you. Okay. All right. Peace and love, everyone. Hotel. Hotel. And Robert and and Wadu. Right.